Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Chapter 6, Section 2, The Colonies Declare Independence. Uh, now our central question for today is, how did Tom and pa Thomas Paine's common sense impact Congress to declare independence from Great Britain? And what are the main ideas behind the Declaration of Independence? So today we're going to be talking about basically two different things. Um, first going to be talking about um, an essay that was written by a man named Thomas Paine called Common Sense. Um, and then we're going to look at how that plus everything else that was going on impacted uh, the Colonial Congress to ultimately declare independence from Great Britain. Now our, this coincides with pages 173 to 176 in your textbook, so if you don't have it with you, you might want to use that to follow along. And our key terms for today are Common Sense, Traitor, Declaration of Independence, Preamble, and natural rights. So, to start us off, let's. Uh, I want to take a look, like a kind of a broad look at the American Revolution as a whole. Now, um, so I, I, I want to believe that the American Revolution was this mass uprising where everybody was like, "Let's get rid of Great Britain and just start our own, start our own nation." But it really was not this massive uprising. As we looked at in section one, um, about a third of the colonists considered themselves patriots and said, we need to get rid of British rule. Um, and a, about a thir another third were loyalists who wanted to remain loyal to Great Britain and remain loyal especially to the king. And there was another third that was just kind of neutral that didn't really care about staying with Great Britain, didn't care about um, leaving Great Britain, they were just kind of like, you know, whatever happens, happens. So, um, at first, like the this the the revolution was not this mass uprising. Um, so, this picture, um, the king, uh, proclamation from the king, uh, was sent by King George the Third in uh, November of 1775, and it uh, this proclamation described how he was going to, quote, crush the rebellion in the colonies. And many saw this as a warning from King George, but the Patriots saw this, used this as fuel to continue their push towards independence. And as we're going to see in the section, uh, not everybody agreed in their position. Remember, it was, it was basically split into thirds. Third Patriots, third Loyalists, third Neutral. So... By 1776, so this proclamation went out in 1775, by 1776, many, many colonists, many more believed that Parliament at this point had no rights to make the lo make laws for the 13 colonies. Um, and it was, it all goes back to the, no taxation without representation. Many of the colonists that uh, believed that Parliament had no right was because they had no representation in Parliament. Um, so if they if the colonies had no representation in Parliament, then Parliament should not try and exert its, its authority over the colonies. Now remember, there's still no United States of America yet at this point. Uh, technically, the colonies at this time were they were still part of the British Empire. So when King George said he was going to crush the rebellion, that's really what he was going to do. He this was looked at as a, re a rebellion by the colonists, rebellion by a, s a chunk of the British Empire. So, if the colonies were still part of, technically part of the British Empire, then uh, why shouldn't Parliament make laws that affected them? So, I want you to take a minute and imagine that you were living in the colony of Pennsylvania in 1776. Um, you had heard about the battles between the New England militias and the British soldiers, but the fighting is still up in like Massachusetts and New York, and still pretty far away from you. So, how do you feel about the? How do you feel about this? How do you feel about this? The these colonial militias fighting against Great Britain. Uh, do you agree with them, or would you prefer to remain a part of Great Britain? So, here's some things to uh, to consider. Now, if you stay with Great Britain, 
you have military protection from the best military in the world. And it wasn't long ago that this military defended you against the French in the French and Indian War. So you know how powerful they are and know how, how well they can protect you. Um, you have access to supplies from the Triangle Trade. And honestly, your cultural identity is British. Um, your family and your family's family came to America from England only a few generations ago. So even though you were born in America, you could still consider yourself to be British. Um, so those are some things to consider if, if you stay with Great Britain. Now, if you declare independence, then you gain the ability to completely govern yourself. And honestly, some of the laws and customs of England really have no bearing on American colonial life. Like, yes, you identify yourself as British, but you've been living, your family's been living in America for a few generations, and um, things are different over here. So there's some, like, you've got military protection and supplies and cultural identity on one side, but you also gain the ability to govern yourself. And your your customs, your laws and customs are different than your uh your family that's still living over in Great Britain. So there's some things to uh some thing things to consider. Which brings us to this man, Thomas Paine. Now, this man he, he wrote an essay entitled Common Sense, and in this essay he tried he wanted to encourage colonists to not only question their loyalty to King George, um, but to question their loyalty to any king for that matter. Um, he believed that the idea of having a king or some sort of monarch was wrong, and that colonists really didn't owe anything to England. Uh, they didn't owe anything to in England to begin with. Like they'd been living in the colonies now for generations, and so there's been there'd been a growing divide between the colonists and with England. So at this point, he was like, "Look, you really don't owe anything to them," and. He believed that it was about time that the colonists officially parted ways with England. But not all the Patriot soldiers were equally excited by the American victories. African-American Prince Whipple told his master, You are going to fight for your liberty, but I have none to fight for. I can't imagine what it would have been like to be a delegate in Continental Congress. Well, I guess it would have been pretty tough. How so? Well, the British needed money and they wanted, it, wanted to get it from the Americans. But the Americans had no representatives in Parliament. So that's what they mean by no taxation without representation. Yeah. Despite the bloodshed, most Americans still hoped that a permanent break could be avoided. But as they wished for peace, the Patriots also prepared for war. The Second Continental Congress continued its work, building an army, finding new trading partners in Europe, and printing money to buy military supplies. Then, in January 1776, an English customs agent who had lived in America for only two years wrote a powerful pamphlet that changed the minds of many Americans about independence. The man was Thomas Paine, and his pamphlet was called Common Sense. Within three months, 120,000 copies had been sold, a huge number for those days. Thomas Paine said that Britain had taken advantage of the colonies and that America would actually be stronger once it was independent. I've heard it said by some that since America prospered because of her ties to Great Britain in the past, the same is necessary for her future happiness. Nothing can be more wrong. I say that America would have done just as well if no European power had noticed it. There will always be a market for American goods as long as eating is the custom in Europe. Thomas Paine's common sense seemed like perfectly good sense to many Americans. By the spring of 1776, British authority in the colonies was collapsing. Royal governors sailed for home. The Second Continental Congress asked the colonies to write new constitutions to govern themselves. 
So, so his essay, Common Sense, um, it struck a chord with a lot of, um, with a lot of colonists and especially a lot of very influential colonial leaders. Um, and it can, he, it convinced many people that independence was not only a good idea, but that it was necessary. And it really impressed the members of the Continental Congress. So as they were meeting, as a, kind of as a result of um, Thomas Paine's, uh, his essay and, and also with the, the fighting that was going on in New England. In June of 1776, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia proposed a very radical resolution in the Congress. And he, the re resolution he proposed was for, for independence to completely break ties with England. Now, before this, we know that the Continental Congress had drafted uh, the Olive Branch Petition to show King George that they were still loyal subjects and they were still loyal to him, but also to request that he remove the Intolerable Acts. But so it went from trying to give King George um, an Olive Branch and show him that they were loyal to June of 1776, uh, Richard Lee proposing, you know what? Let's uh, we we need to break away and we need to become an independent independent nation. And this is a close-up of the actual signing of the Declaration of the, the document that would become the Declaration of Independence. Now, uh, now let's stop and think about this for a second. We're living in uh, here in 21st century America. Um, and we look back at this time and think about how brave and um, how larger than life these men were. I mean, these are the men that founded these are founding fathers these are the men that founded our country um so we think about them like yeah like it was it was it was a good thing that they did um we needed to break away from great britain but do you realize what lee had really proposed here um for a group of people any any size especially a group this size to come together and declare independence from their home country at this time wasn't just brave, that was treason. Um, and if the British government had caught wind of their plans, then all of the men involved could have been tried and then eventually hanged as traitors. So this this picture this this news, that's what could have been waiting for many of these men. So this was not a resolution that was just decided upon lightly or very flippantly. Like, you know what? I'm sick of England. Let's just let's let's just do whatever we want. If the colonies went to war with Great Britain and lost, then um, well, first, if the if Great Britain had caught wind of what they were doing, they could have been hanged. If the colonies were able to declare independence, go to war with Great Britain, and then lost that war. The men that were in charge could be tried as traitors and hanged. So there would be no George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, uh, Benjamin Franklin, not nothing. Um, so when the Continental Congress and when the special committee that had been put together asked Thomas Jefferson to draw up the official document that would declare independence from Great Britain, Everyone there knew exactly what was at stake, uh, their very lives. So in late June, uh, Jefferson uh, had completed the document, and first it was first read to Congress. And on July 2nd, Congress voted that all 13 colonies were no longer colonies, but were now free and independent states. And... They took a, took took some time to refine the language uh, used in the Declaration, and then it was officially signed on July fourth, seventeen seventy six. And if we look at look at this, the last part, the John Hancock, who was president of the Congress, 
uh, is famous for his large and flowing letters. Like sometimes people refer to a signature as somebody's John Hancock. Well, it's named after this man, the president of the Continental Congress. And he said that he wrote in such large and flowing letters so that even King George would be able to read it. So he didn't just make it like a little tiny signature, hoping that if, if things go wrong, that he would be safe. No, he may have put a, put his signature on there plain as day. So, so it showed that he knew full well what was at stake and he was behind it a hundred percent. So let's look at the actual document a little bit that was, uh, that had been, that was sent to King George. Now, the Declaration of Independence as a document consists of three, uh, three main parts. Um, we have first the introduction, which is known as the preamble. So that kind of states everything that the, uh, the document is going to be about. And then there are three main parts following that. The first part, um, focuses on what Jefferson refers to as, uh, natural rights or rights that belong to a person from birth. So these are things that, uh, life, liber liberty, and, um, and some, translations property some the pursuit of happiness so these are things that as, just as a human being uh you're entitled to these rights you're entitled to life you're entitled to liberty uh and the second section show was a list of how britain had wronged the colony so it was basically a list of grievances like this is you've you've done this 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 and the final section of the document takes all of that and says, because of this list, uh, we are announcing that we are now free and independent, uh, independent of British rule. And, um, the, the preamble itself, I think is just, it's, it's, people don't talk like this anymore. Um, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to separation. So that's one big long sentence that says, we've had it. It's, it's come, it's come to this, uh, there, there's, it, it has come to a point that, um, we need to, it has become necessary for us to dissolve this, these political bands that have connected us to, uh, Great Britain. Um, and that it's not just us, but the very laws of nature and nature's God have compelled us to to make this statement. Um, so it's, uh, people just don't talk like that anymore, which can be a good and can be a bad thing. But that's, so that shows kind of the, the flowing language that was used in the Declaration of Independence. And, um, After nearly a year of war, the Americans still had not declared their independence from Great Britain. By John Adams' reckoning, only one-third of the colonists were for the rebellion. Another third were against it, and the remaining third were indifferent. The image that the American Revolution was a spontaneous mass uprising of united souls who uh, possibly from birth yearned to be an independent nation is not at all true. Far fewer people were willing to break with the king. Some didn't really feel that the revolution was merited. Even within Congress, meeting at the Pennsylvania State House, some delegates still argued for mending the rift with England. But soon, the radicals pushing for independence would get an unexpected boost from King George himself. In January of 1776, ships arrived from England carrying the past year's news. The king had announced to Parliament three months earlier that he was gathering a huge force to crush the rebellion. 
On June 7, 1776, Congressional Delegate Richard Henry Lee, a tobacco planter from Virginia, rose to offer the inevitable resolution. That these United Colonies are free and independent states. That they are absolved from all allegiance to the British Crown. They wish to make a declaration of independence not only for the sake of the civilian population who would see this break, would realize what it was for and would support it, but perhaps above all for foreign opinion so that other countries could formally note that these colonies had set up their own independent government and therefore crucially could negotiate with foreign governments, could contract alliances and could receive aid. Congress appointed a five-man committee to draft a Declaration of Independence. Among them, Benjamin Franklin and John Adams. But none of the senior members wanted the tedious job of writing it. The document itself, they believed, would be an historical footnote, a technicality. So the task was foisted on the committee's youngest member, 33-year-old Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson didn't want the job either. His mother had recently died, and he had just returned from Virginia after being bedridden for six weeks with a migraine headache. Nevertheless, during two hot June days and nights, in a second-story rented room, Jefferson bent over his portable writing table and produced the first draft of the most enduring protest document in the history of the free world. Jefferson's words, though magnificent, were not wholly original. He borrowed from his Virginia neighbor, George Mason, who in turn had borrowed from the 17th century British philosopher, John Locke. Just weeks earlier, Mason had written in the preamble to the Virginia Constitution that all men by nature are equally free and independent and have certain inherent rights, namely the enjoyment of life and liberty. There's nothing new in the Declaration of Independence. If its arguments hadn't been familiar and understandable, it wouldn't have been a very powerful document of justification. What you might say was radical about it was, after all, it was an initial formal statement of the first of the modern revolutions against king, government, and an established legitimate constitution. Which brings us to our assignment for today. So I want you to um, think about think about this 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 uh, question: Were the members of Congress justified in their decision to split from Great Britain, or were they committing treason? Um, think about that. Were they, were they right in what they were doing, or were they committing treason? Um, there can, there's arguments that can be made for both sides, and there's an argument that says they were doing both at the same time. Um, so with that in mind, I want you to put yourself in their shoes. Imagine that you, were, you had been invited to be a part of the Continental Congress, um, and you're sitting there uh, on July 2nd when it's when it's read, when the De Declaration of Independence is read for the first time, and then sitting there on July 4th, uh, would you have signed the Declaration of Independence? Um, if you didn't sign, then you'd be labeled as a loyalist. But if you did sign, um, then there's the potential that you could be hanged for treason. So your assignment is to, again, imagine that you were living during this time, and you are to choose one side, loyalist, patriot, or you can choose to be neutral, and explain why you chose to sign the Declaration of Independence, or why not. So if you chose, chose to sign the De Declaration of Independence, you would be writing from the perspective of a patriot. If you chose not to, you would write from the perspective of a loyalist. Um, the third option is to 
you can remain neutral, in which case you would need to give a good description as to why neutrality is the best option. Now, your grade is based upon the, your ex, the explanation that you give, not on the side that you chose. I've gotten some fantastic uh, responses in the past from patriots, from loyalists, and from students that would have remained neutral. So it's not um, it's not which side you choose, it's how well you can explain your decision and explain your position. Now I'm looking for at least two full paragraphs, and these are full paragraphs uh, using complete sentences. And you can write this as either a letter to a friend or relative in another colony, and in which case you would be trying to convince them to either be a patriot, loyalist, or neutral. Or you can write it as a journal entry um, that night after either signing or not signing the declaration. Um, and in your response, you need to include at least two examples from the lesson. So if you need, if you need, a, need to know where to go, if you look uh, back up in the lesson under, in the section under, under the title Common Sense, um, underneath that picture of King George, there are some examples of benefits and, uh, benefits for staying with Great Britain, benefits for declaring independence. Now, this assignment will be worth, out, be out of a total of 15 points. So, to give you a little bit of a, an idea of what I'm looking for, I, gave you two sample responses, one bad and one good, from uh, our two soon-to-be all-star students, Hubert Harrison and Harold Hubertson. Now, Hubert Harrelson gave a very good response as to what I'm, I'm looking for. Um, and in his journal, he likes to call himself Hubie Harrison. Um, so you can see that Hubert used gave two two paragraphs of complete sentences and uh, gave an explanation of the different sides and then described his decision and why he chose to not sign the Declaration of Independence. Um, now, so that's Hubie. Now, Harold Hubertson, on the other side, the response that he gave is one that would elicit maybe a, a at best, a two of two or three out of 15, and it was not written with complete sentences, and it was one phrase, just, I am a patriot, and I signed the Declaration of Independence. A, he did not uh, describe the position, didn't give any examples, didn't capitalize, so I'm looking for punctuation here as well. So, um, and like always, if you need any help with anything, please come find me. Be like Hubert Harrison, not like Harold Hubertson. Have a wonderful rest of your day.
It's beautifully written. Which brings us to our assignment for today. So I want you to um, think about think about this 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 uh, question. Were the members of Congress justified in their decision to split from Great Britain, or were they committing treason? Um, think about that. Were they were they right in what they were doing, or were they committing treason? Um, there can, there's arguments that can be made for both sides, and there's an argument that says they were doing both at the same time. Um, so with that in mind, I want you to put yourself in their shoes. Imagine that you were you had been invited to be a part of the Continental Congress, um, and you're sitting there uh, on July 2nd when it's when it's read when the de Declaration of Independence is read for the first time, and then sitting there on July 4th. Uh, would you have signed the Declaration of Independence? Um, if you didn't sign, then you'd be labeled as a loyalist. But if you did sign, um, then there's the potential that you could be hanged for treason. So your assignment is to, again, imagine that you were living during this time, and you were to choose one side, loyalist, patriot, or you can choose to be neutral, and explain why you chose to sign the Declaration of Independence, or why not? So, if you chose chose to sign the De Declaration of Independence, you would be writing from the perspective of a patriot. If you chose not to, you would write from the perspective of a loyalist. Um, the third option is to you can remain neutral, in which case you would need to give a good description as to why neutrality is the best option. Now. Your grade is based upon the, your ex, the explanation that you give, not on the side that you chose. I've gotten some fantastic uh, responses in the past from patriots, from loyalists, and from students that would have remained neutral. So it's not um, it's not which side you choose; it's how well you can explain your decision and explain your position. Now, I'm looking for at least two full paragraphs, and these are full paragraphs uh, using complete sentences. And you can write this as either a letter to a friend or relative in another colony, and in which case you would be trying to convince them to either be a patriot, loyalist, or neutral, or you can write it as a journal entry. Um, that night after either signing or not signing the declaration. Um, and in your response, you need to include at least two examples from the lesson. So if you need, if you need, a, need to know where to go, if you look uh, back up in the lesson, under, in the section under, under the title Common Sense, um, underneath that picture of King George, there are some examples of benefits and uh, benefits for staying with Great Britain, benefits for declaring independence. Now, this assignment would be worth out, be out of a total of 15 points. So, to give you a little bit of a, an idea of what I'm looking for, I gave you two sample responses, one bad and one good, from uh, our two soon-to-be all-star students, Hubert Harrison and Harold Hubertson. Now, Hubert Harrelson gave a very good response as to what I'm, I'm looking for. Um, and in his journal, he likes to call himself Hubie Harrison. Um, so you can see that Hubert used, gave two, two paragraphs of complete sentences and uh, gave an explanation of the different sides and then described his decision and why he chose to not sign the Declaration of Independence. Um, now, so that's Hubie. Now, Harold Hubertson, on the other side, the response that he gave is one that would elicit maybe a, a at best a two of two or three out of fifteen, and it was not written with complete sentences, and it was one phrase: "Just I am a patriot, and I sign the Declaration of Independence." A, he did not uh, describe the position, didn't give any examples didn't capitalize, so I'm looking for punctuation here as well. So, um, and like always, if you need any help with anything, please come find me. Be like Hubert 